second official time doing it. I'm still going to need assistance doing it. But I'll help you out. Uh, call to order. Vertica, take roll. Um, John, uh, John, Josh. Present. Present here. Just like in class. I'm here. Rob. Here. Scott. Scott's no longer on the Parks and Rec board. Okay. Jennifer. Here. Bill. I seen that. I seen that. Yeah. I seen that yeah. slide over there. <laughs> This is my second time <laughs> reading the, maybe my last. <laughs> no, honestly, I told him, I said, I'm not too crazy about being in the chair, so. set up these three committees as part of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, but I know nobody's met and that type of thing. And I know Scott's not here anymore, so he was on a couple of them. But I mean, in order for us to function, we should have our own areas that, that you should kind of discuss amongst yourself in a group of three or whatever. And that's where you can get the public involved and have them be on your committee. They don't necessarily have to be on the Parks and Rec Board, but they can still be part of your committee. So um, I just threw those on there. I'm not looking for anybody to report anything or anything like that. I just want you to be aware that those three committees are in the bylaws and, and those should be set up um, as we move forward. So. so those are the only three that are listed in the bylaws? Those are the three committees that are listed in the bylaws. And have you assigned members to them? Or is that what we do here? Back. I'm new, so. Yep. I'm look back. On the Parks and Landscape, Roberta and Scott. On the Recreation Programming, Scott and John. And then Finance was Roberta and Josh. And then Rob, which one did you take? I forgot which one you took. I was absent. You were absent. I think we put him on all of them. Because he was absent. Me and Josh. Yeah, and finance is Roberta and Josh. I'll replace Scott. I'm both. On parks and landscape and recreation program. So Rob's going to replace Scott. So Jennifer, there's whichever one you want to go on. Bear with us, folks. She's new. So. I am new. Yeah. Well, 
It's good. It's good Actually, for all of us to refresh. They, they both only have two. I just think it's Parks and Landscape Committee is basically a committee that just deals with the parks and landscaping around like town and that type of thing. Like the flowers that they put on the scene. That's yeah. DDA, that's beautification, which is a subcommittee so under DDA. DDA. No, this is strictly the parks and like last year I redid the landscape in front of Liberty Park. Redid did that. I, I did that last year. That was something I did. And then there's, you helped. Yes, you did. Josh and his son, yeah. Zach, helped. I don't. I but yeah. basically, just doing doing the parks. I mean, we have several parks that some people probably don't even know that we have. But you know, um, I put it in as a committee because I thought it would be useful. Mm -hmm. so. And then the recreation is more. Of recreation is the sports, athletics, so football, basketball, baseball, softball, okay. etc. It'll help a lot more when it gives you a copy of the bylaws. It'll have all the parks and stuff in there. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll wait. And I can get, get you. I can get you that copy. Then afterwards. Maybe. Or, those might not be in the bylaws. It doesn't. It doesn't actually way. say what each committee does. So um, it doesn't say exactly what each committee does. It just lists them. So it says each committee will have it be chaired by. A commissioner appointed by the chairperson approved by the board, volunteer appointments of Bridgeport Township residents to serve on each committee shall be made by the committee chair. Da 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 da. da. Really, it's a way of, of setting up a committee to get other people involved community because involvement. the board it only consists of five people. Five people is not very many to be on all these different committees. Six, right? Five. The board is five. The board is five. He's not. I don't. Technically not the board. <laughs> I'm technically not the board because I'm the director. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll I'll take it. Yeah, that's fine. No big deal. Okay. We haven't done anything since July with it, so take your time. As long as you don't wait till July. Okay. And maybe I can talk to you a little bit more about it on the side to try to see what I can do more. Yep. Sure. And, and to be honest, I mean, the Parks and Rec Board, Rob, Rob and Roberta will vouch for me on this, was non-existent until I came on board in the summer of 2013. I was on for three years and we never met. They never met. Okay. So it was just like there. And now I'm trying to get it back to being relevant. Uh -huh. So just to kind of give you some history. Well, I guess it doesn't have to be private. It's just the cameras make me feel like this looks super formal or whatever. But it's not. It's it very informal. It's very informal. I would really so. like to have like the marketing of your already existing event. Um, so it'd be in the program. And maybe then. even be part of that would like, be part of the recreation program. Emails yeah. out. I know I'm signed up for like some of the Genesee County Parks emails that I get from like events I've taken my daughter to, and I'd love to see more of that kind of stuff go out to people in Bridgeport about because there's stuff that's going on. I feel like maybe people just don't know about it. Yeah, so, that's been my struggle. Whatever, whatever committee that puts me on, okay. I'd like to help in that area. Sounds good. We'll get you there. Okay. Huh? So you said to me. Yeah. So all you looking on the camera there, this is informal. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely informal. So, anyways, that's why the committees are there. So you're so. recommending recreation. Then. I'm recommending recreation. Put you on that, or do you want to wait on that? No, yeah, that sounds good. I, that's all I wanted to talk through. Is like I don't want to be on the committee and then be not helpful. So just to clarify, are you now a member of our board? She is the. Tr she's are you are the trustee? The, she's the trustee that the took trustee. Vanessa Garris. Right, right. Um, but I'll be appointed to the board at the last council. Right, right. So, so okay. she technically took Scott's spot. Right. But if we wanted to get another member on the board, we could because you could just be here as a township board trustee right. representative. That's what I was trying to figure out. If you were doing so because if, if you were doing two roles, then you could sign up for two. Okay. Just no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was appointed to the board, but if I wanted somebody else, then gotcha. You know, if somebody else is interested, well, welcome, else know welcome officially to the park. Yeah. <laughs> if that means that we could have another spot, I mean, we want to solve it. You know, 
up somebody. I could technically have one more. How does that work? Would there be an application? Yep. Have to do an application and then argue a point. Same application. That we trust filled you. out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then those people could be on the other committees too. Yeah. Yeah. Fill it up. Fill it up. We should actually kind of back up because Jennifer doesn't know everybody. I met <laughs> See, we're very informal. <laughs> John one in December, and then I kind of we know each other. Um, I'm Josh, Josh Cassidy. Cassidy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Josh is actually a Spalding Township resident, but he can be on the Parks and Rec board because my programs involve Spalding Township. Okay. And he's also the chairman of the Bridgeport Sports Bay. There. Oh, everybody knows our bikes. <laughs> Clearing that up. I was doing the thing in my head about the space, so the further I'm in front of the shot, it's just hot. So I kind of narrowed it down. It's easy with only five people. Yeah. <laughs> business the new kayak launches um, we uh, we did get approved for the Davis Park site but we didn't get approved for the Hoffman site um, and we're reapplying for the Hoffman site so um, that'll be going in April 1st um, the grant actually the trust fund grant was actually approved well, it was recommended in December and actually it got approved in February when the legislature passed their their bill down there at Lansing. Um, uh, it was funny because I saw Vanessa when I was down at the state conference and she said that it was the first thing that she got to vote on was was that bill to approve the trust fund money. So, um, and Bridgeport was in there, so she thought that was kind of cool. But, um, so our grant for 121,000 um, through the trust fund will be coming. And then I've got 120,000 matching funds that are committed through foundations and stuff so how much um, are matching funds 120 awesome sauces right it was a lot of hard work um, so the uh, I actually just met with uh, Tanya from Spicer today we looked at the plans she's got the parking lot and not where I wanted it so she's gonna go back and redo them and that's why I didn't bring them to show you guys because not exactly what I thought they should be. So, more to come on that. Now, is that something that we all would eventually vote on to go forward with, or how is, yeah. that, how is that final decision made? Just that would be just for last minute extra input and saying, hmm, anything yeah. else? Actually, mind? I'm going to step away and I'm going to go get them because I have them in my office, and that's a good point because I can get the input of all of you guys. Um, and I'll show you what I talked to her Especially about. Especially me since I'll be using it and I got yeah. jived out of uh, So I was talking about you while you're gone with the other camera. This is where you can insert an ad on YouTube and get more money. For I can edit it or put an ad, but yeah, I don't do the ads. No, I don't. You do great work though, by the way. Oh, thanks. I know. Hey, I congratulations on the nomination. You, you skipped out on me before yeah, I got a chance nice. to swing by and say hi. So Yeah, I was planning on staying a little bit longer, but... Um, it was cold. Well, she just mentioned... Yeah, we, we were with other so people, Tanya. so... Gotcha. gotcha. So that's her, the yeah, we thanks. didn't stick around much longer after either, so, so I had a two-year-old at home that was still awake when we got home, so... Big version and a little version. Bill would be able to stay for sure what the timeline is going to be. Uh, grand opening. So this is just an area over here. bridges right here and then, then it would involve building a drive to the parking lot and then a path going down to the river 
the pavilion is here, the playground's here. There'd be a path going over to the pavilion and over to the playground. Um, and she went into all the technical jargon of the elevation and how this is 596 and this is 582. And she needs all this space to have the slope stay under 5%. Um, is that so it meets handicap, handicap yep. requirements? Yes, otherwise then you got to put in rails and all this other garbage. And it costs more. My question to her was, because I didn't like there being a path here and another path here, is can we take this parking lot and move it here, closer to the pavilion? And that's what she was going to go back and work on. And then we would take out this path, the drive would come up to the parking lot up here, and then the path would go down like she wants it, and a path going over to the pavilion. Okay. Yeah. And then we would cut this, we would cut the circle, there's a circle spot on the end of the pavilion by the playground, that would be cut, and it would be a path going over to the playground from the pavilion, along with a path coming over here to connect this path. But I didn't like where she had, originally this parking lot was supposed to go here. But we couldn't get there because of the 5% in the green. So. Central, the centralization of the parking lot would be great though. Yeah, but this is 200, what'd she say, 224 feet What's going it? down to the river. And I'm like, that's a long ways to carry a kayak or canoe. What is the current distance from here to the river? From the pavilion? Right there. Yeah, it's 110 foot going from this line to that line. And this is the topographical survey that I had to, that they came in and did and, and uh, I had to pay for. But, but I, 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 I mean, when you, when you look at the, the grades, I mean, like right here, we're 595.4, and then we go to 591. It seems like this parking lot could be moved this way. Where does the water start at the end of The river's over here. Oh. River's over here, and then we also have water that comes along through here. And this is the actual island. Okay. Bridge going across is That's here. The bridge right, right, right here. here. Right out, right out okay. the window, yep. So. So up in, up in here is, the, yeah. Yeah, up here is, is the bathrooms would be here, another pavilion, office buildings right here. We're right here is where we're at. We're right in this area here. It would be better. Parking lot and stuff, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and then the rest of these are just basically details of the head on the water and the head wall and the path profile. And and just how the parking lot's going to be laid out. And da, 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 da. What kind it's of path is going down? Is it, it's just concrete. A concrete. 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 So by moving that closer, you're going to save some money too than that concrete. Mm -hmm. or wider driveway well, it'll be asphalt, down. I think. But my idea was to widen this a little bit and get it to come up here and then take this out. Because, like I told Tanya, I says, we've got a path here and we're going to have a path here. That's going to look stupid. In my mind, but unnecessary. unnecessary, yeah. That's it. I guess that's a better word than stupid. <laughs> We're very informal. Says the actual distance. She just told me that this was two hundred and twenty-four feet. That's actually what we had talked about in the original, the original, the original idea was it would be about 100 feet that they would have to walk with a canoe or a kayak, which is a lot better than 224. And then the parking lot would slope down so that the drainage would actually go this way out of the parking lot. But the reason why that we're struggling here is because this is actually a hill. I mean, on the island, it's a hill as opposed to. 
and if you take out too much, she went over flood and all this other garbage. Ordinary high water mark is 581, and observed level is 580 back in 2007. She went over all of that. So really, so trying to keep it out of the trying to keep it out of the flood. So that's never been completely flooded out. 1986 it was. Well, in 86 there was a lot. 96 down there. everything in Bridgeport was flooded. But so anyway, that's the site plan. So if you guys got any. No, I think it's a good idea to move it closer for sure. What's the timeline? And they're cutting in over here. Yep. And, the and this is. This is the easy dock system that would be put in. So this is the floating square. Yep, it's a floating oh, okay. dock system that gets <laughs> taken out every year. No, this is just these are just measurement lines right here. It's a space for storage. Uh, it would actually I would store it underneath the pavilion out there and chain it to the pavilion so it doesn't float away. We gotta look at one of these, Jennifer. That would be better. That was the original plan. The conceptual plan. You can see where the parking lot's located down there, as opposed to where it is on the big sheet there. Thank you. You can keep that. So, so what's the what's the that projected that's the uh, so Hopefully, if everything. Yes. Did you see the Jennifer? Did you see that? That's what's going to go in there on the river. Okay. No, I haven't seen it. Yeah. That's, that's what's going to go in on the river. So you take your canoe and kayak, put it in here, and a handicapped person can slide off the bench getting their thing, and then you just push yourself off. This is rollers. You just push so yourself off, and you've got to touch the water. It's pretty cool. And I actually talked to the guy down at the state conference. He was down there. So. Now, in that, is there going to be, there is not going to be any access for any small fishing boat or any sort of like just not at this just, one no just an opening to hand launch it not at this one no but you'd be able to yeah you'd be able to bring it down and put the boat right you set your boat in the water walk it out here and then get in it you'd have to carry it you'd have to carry it the water level at that where we're putting this in at is kind of low i mean the, the shoreline is low so you could walk it down and do it that way now my idea is for down at the Hoffman site, I know we had talked about putting in one of these, but also putting in more where you could put a flat bottom boat in down there, that type of thing. But not a trailer launch. Not a trailer launch. It would be a, what they call a low impact launch. But the one, that's just a gravel launch, so. Yeah. So you could actually put a, you could trailer a boat down there. There's no, there's not going to be a path, path to it. To there's it. no vehicle path. No. Okay. Because I would say the one like over on 13, that's the low impact launch. Yeah. That one is actually where you can use Easy. your vehicle you to back it. Back it in. in. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, is the water levels, I mean, at certain times of the year, Diana's been out on the river a lot. I've so spent a lot of time. At certain times of the year, I think the water level might be able to sustain a boat like that. But During flooding, high water, that's about it. Yeah. I mean, you can't take a motorboat down You talk down about anymore. June and July, you, you're not going to take a motorboat out on well, no. There's just not enough no, but water. But you go with a trolling motor. I've done yeah. it okay. too many times. But well, yeah, no, there, I know there's a group of people in Bridgeport that are and have been unhappy since the other launch has been shut down. Yeah. But there weren't boats down there anymore. That's the whole thing. No one was taking a boat out anymore except for during high water. Yeah. So, I mean, it was hardly used. Well, yeah, they ended up using 13 and going upstream. So there is, there is, I mean, it could happen down at the Hoffman site, but we'll see how that goes. Phase two. Yeah, that's phase two. I gotta get more money. So did I miss the answer? They expected uh, finish. The, uh, it's gonna vary. It's gonna vary. Uh, I would hope to have it done by fall this year, but realistically, I would say spring of 2016 be up and fully functional. No, that's it's just for this one. That's, that's for this one. And then during 2016, we'll be working on Hoffman. Getting approval. Yeah, as long as everything goes according to plan. Now, the grant that we're applying for in, in April 
for the Hoffman site is going to be a $50,000 grant. I'm going on the pass of the DNR Trust Fund. Anything $50,000 and less is automatically funded, and that's why we're doing it that way. Because I need, I need $121,000 to do the one down at the Hoffman site. And I'm about $50,000 short. Now, uh, has the township spoken about any regulation on commercial endeavors to use that as a... We have not talked about that, but I know there's going to be. Right. You know, so, you know, if there's going to be, you know, some new rental company that wants to truck in people and use it, mm -hmm. I mean, is there going to be a license that's going to have to be sold for commercial usage? That's a great idea so, because some way I got to get some money off of this right. thing. And, and, <laughs> and even like a donation box or have a dollar per usage. There's been talk. There's been you talk know. about uh, about the township getting canoes and doing their own canoe library. That's, I don't know how that would work. That would involve a lot of staff. So. You need more staff. Yeah. Right. If it brings in enough money and the money's there to pay the staff. Then Jennifer, I do need that easy dock launch thing back. Oh, I'm sorry. Because I don't have but one of those. <laughs> so any resident or citizen. But yeah, we could do a donation box and that type of thing. Yes. You know, as of right now, any resident or citizen will yep. can use it for free as long as they're not. And actually, money it's, off, because it's trust fund money being used, it almost has to stay that way. But if a commercial place comes in, now we're talking something else. You're going to have to have a license for their yes. to work out. Something. So yeah, that's canoe kayak launches. Unless there's any other questions, I'm just trying to move it along a little faster. That's all. So. All right. Uh, move around to basketball. Baskets, basketball season summary. Uh, at 83 youth in basketball this year. Um, if you look on this sheet here that I gave you, this is numbers for everything. This kind of goes along with the uh, the year end report. This is numbers that I was able to capture of the different sports programs, that type of thing that has been that has been ran here in the township. Um, you'll notice with youth basketball, I wanted to point this out. 2013, before I came on board, um, there was 54 kids, and the program was canceled due to lack of participation. And then in 2013-14, I ran a program with 31 kids. And this year we're up to 83 kids, and then it's broken down by grade there, according to the registrations. So, um, Great job. Yeah, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. um, but with that being said, our sixth grade basketball team, which is a travel team, they play Carleton, Francis Ray Academy, North Saginaw Charter Academy. Um, I think that's all of them. International Academy of Saginaw, did I say that one? Yeah. Um, they actually finished third in the tournament this year. Our seventh grade team finished fourth in the league, and our eighth grade team finished second in the league. So, um, and I look at the bigger picture, our seventh and eighth grade boys basketball teams in the school ball have gone undefeated this year. And about half of those kids played rec ball, which was, a month prior to their season starting, two months. They played November, December, and then their school season started in January. And they actually had a game tonight. And seventh grade game was 43 to 13 or something like that, I want to say. The eighth grade game was, eighth grade game when I left, it was 49 to 10. So they're blowing people out. So it, it's proven that it's beneficial as far as basketball goes. And my hope is to increase that number. Um, I have some ideas of how to increase third and fourth grade participation. Um, this year we actually had to combine second grade, third and fourth grade all together to have enough teams to play each other. We had uh, three teams and my goal is to go to four on four basketball as opposed to five on five basketball. Kids will get more playing time, they'll touch the ball a lot more. It should go over pretty good. And John ran our kindergarten and first grade program, which saw on average about yeah. 13 or so, 12 yeah, or 13 kids. Average would be 10 per week. Yeah. Upwards of 13. 
I was trying to be on the positive side. Hey, so we are just when we had five that one. <laughs> <laughs> it was bitterly cold and snowy that day, though. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, basketball's alive and well. So. New business, Parson and Rec Advisory Board meeting dates. Gave you guys a calendar um, with the dates highlighted. These are the dates that I kind of want to go with. Um, as long as everybody else is in agreement, and I strategically place. I did them strategically um, with us meeting again in March. I'll get back to you. Um, in front of the Easter egg hunt. Okay? And then I did a meeting in May in front of Bridgefest softball tournament. And I did another one in July um, in front of the Hardball Classic Baseball Tournament. Uh, another one in September in front of Halloween, just in case you guys want to do something there. And then in November and ahead of uh, Christmas in December. So they're strategically placed. Um, so do we need a motion on this for Christmas? Say, yeah, to accept the dates and uh, run with them. I'll make a motion to approve the dates on the next year, on this year's calendar. Support. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Super. So those are your meeting dates. Tuck they them might away, change. Mark them. <laughs> mark them down. And uh, we'll run with those. Easter egg hunt, the date that I have written down, let me just double check, for the Easter egg hunt, Easter is April 5th, so the date that I have down for the Easter egg hunt is March 28th, which is a Saturday. Uh, if you remember last year, everybody except for Jennifer, um, Last year, I kind of gave this to you guys, and you guys took it, and I just made sure that you guys had everything that you needed there. I know John put together some bikes that I had that were kind of left over. Um, Rob's wife was there in place of him to help with things with the Bridge Fest queen in them, and I just got a text today saying that they're going to be there again. The Bridge Fest girls from the pageant will be there. I know Roberta stuffed bags last year, even though she couldn't be there for the day. Josh was there on that day and helped out a ton. So um, that's what I'm looking for, is you guys to take the Easter egg hunt and go where no man has gone before. Biggest thing that I, that I know is, I know Scott was on it last year, and his mom went out and did donations, and I asked her about it today at the DDA meeting, if she would go and do that again, and she really didn't give me a reply. So. That's the biggest thing, is to go around in the community to get candy either prizes. candy donations, money to buy candy, um, prizes, that type of stuff. So that's that's the biggie right there. I just don't have time, folks, to go out and do that. I really don't. I'll make sure the eggs are there. I'll make sure that the signs are up. I'll make sure that the Anderson Complex is open and everything and all of that. But I don't have time. I'd recommend asking Bridgefest. Hmm? For a donation. Yeah. I think the gun club needs gun club a donation last year. Last year we got the gun club, ET Automotive, the BNS Heating and Cooling, McDonald's, um, Kroger. I have a I have a list in my office. Somebody wants the list of who did last year. Easter egg hunt is your guys' baby. There's a lot of kids in turn. And, and there is a lot of kids anywhere. I think last year we had almost 200 kids there. So, but I do want to do the registration again a little different because I want to coop email addresses so that I can send out big emails and stuff like that. Um, that didn't work out so well last year. 
maybe we can meet about how better to do that. Mm -hmm. I have some ideas. I have some notes from last year. And I know Roberta mentioned um, getting wristbands for different age groups and stuff, right? Yeah. I'm trying to recall this. I have it all written down. But um, getting wristbands for the different age groups so that they can't go from one age group to the other age group because we ran them at different times. Mm -hmm. And we do it over at the Anderson Complex, uh, which is over in Liberty Park. I can call on donations. Super. I'll give you a list. Yep, of who helped last year. And I'll corner Sue Carpenter again Tuesday at the Township Board meeting and she'll help. She just, you just gotta nudge her in the right direction. Maybe a good way to so, meet people. Yeah. Super. All right. I know it's D on the list, but when's the cutoff for baseball softball registration? We're not there yet. I'm asking because it may be a great segue to utilize the Easter egg oh. as an avenue to. Actually, the cutoff is the final day to register for bad baseball softball is April 2nd. Right. So, but on March 28th, they're past the day of paying the early discount. They'll be paying the late fee after. The one day. The one waiver. day waiver. The one day waiver. The one day early discount day. Easter egg hunt. Sign up. Yeah. I, I think you do. I think yeah, you have to take this one out there. I think that's good yeah. idea. Yeah. Good idea, Rob. Yeah. Sorry, I, sorry, I got ahead of myself. That's all right. The one day waiver. year to do river cleanup um, as part of the Castle River Greenway Association. Uh, our cleanup day is July 25th. And I set that day. Sorry, nobody had input on it, but I had to put out a grant, so I had to do a date and everything. Um, so July 25th, we are going to clean from the historic bridge upstream to Dixie Highway, basically the Hoffman. Where we want to uh, clean the river. Um, I put in a grant to the Michigan Volunteer River and Stream Creek Cleanup Program. They've used this program uh, in years past, requesting $1,415, in which uh, I think we got a pretty good shot at getting. They've got it every year, every year that they've applied for it, the Greenway has. And, um, but I also have, along with that, there's $500 in our Parks and Rec budget that I budgeted because I knew I was going to be doing cleanup. And then the DDA has also given me $500. So we have a match of 1,000, it's actually 1,015 the way it all came out, which is a 72% match, which they only ask that you have 25% or greater. So we have a lot of, a lot of funds and it's funny, I talk about this at the Greenway meeting and they said, well, what are you going to use all the money for? And I said, well, I'm going to do some things a little differently than you guys have done. So like the person that comes out with the most unusual item out of the river is going to get a prize. The person that collects the most will get a prize and those types of things. I'm going to offer some prizes and that's what most of that money is for is to get gift cards, gas cards or something for the people that are, um, and we can talk about this more in the do you guys can give me suggestions? What's the total grant money? Uh, I put in for $1,415. So, so there's there's roughly $2,500. Now, what utilities and then, is that? Is that the fire department getting involved? Yep, fire department gets involved. I've already made everybody here in the township aware of the date. Police department, fire department at our department head meeting. I let everybody know. Uh, Chief Nelson said that there'll definitely be firefighters involved. And, some of those guys will definitely be involved, including himself. Now, are you so, going to start, um, are those going to be uh, Project Greenway meetings that would need to be attended for people volunteering? Mm, not necessarily. Are we going to have our own meetings leading up to that with community and 
everybody to get a game plan together? We would, we could have one, I would say we could have one meeting. Normally, we put it out there as the time that everybody's gonna meet, and we meet down here at Davis Park, that's my plan. They'll go over safety concerns and that type of thing. Or, um, you know, talk about safety, and then everybody will have a different spot along the river, and I'm still working on those yet. So, if you want to become more involved with the Greenway, you can come to one of the meetings. Well, I, me. I was I would, when I started with the canoe races, yeah. so. Yeah, I'd love and to I have a river for canoes to get yeah. through with my boat and a chainsaw that I, I got permission from the DNR to get. Yeah. You know, so I'm just wondering what kind of equipment and all that fun stuff that's going to be involved. Typically, when they do these cleanups, they're not removing trees and that type of thing. They're removing washing machines, tires, mm -hmm. car hoods, car doors. These are some of the things that they found. And, and stuff. Last year they found a washing machine, which I thought was crazy. But um, those are some of the things that have come out of the river. Last year they did from, it was up in Carroll, from Carroll to Cass City, I wanna say, somewhere in that area is the, where they cleaned up. So. so we are not removing obstructions. We're not removing trees at this point. So DNRs, Obviously, I'm notified mm -hmm. the Greenway, but mm -hmm. uh, actually, there hasn't been a DNR person at the Greenway meeting since December. So, right. so I've had a hard time talking with those folks. <clears throat> is that the riverbanks included, or is it just yep, the riverbanks river? and the river? And so then you're, you're going to have to get a hold of the refuge because the section that bends back around. That or the people on the refuge. refuge. But the part on through the refuge, if you're caught on their property, is federal trespassing. And uh, that's what I was told. U.S. Fish they, and Wildlife. You yes. Cannot touch we have contacts with yeah, them. You cannot be on their property. Well, we'll, we'll get permission. Okay. I just. So there's typically Michelle from the U.S. Fish and <clears throat> Wildlife is at our meetings too, and okay. she hasn't been there neither, so because last time I talked to her, she was gonna clean out the beaver dam that's in the culvert on Fort Road, and that hasn't been done yet, so. She's got other problems to worry about too, so. So more to come on that, I just wanted to get the date out there for everybody to know that it's July 25th. All right, moving on, uh, baseball, softball season. Baseball, softball, registrations are out. Signs are up by Go Vines and over by the school. Had those go up this week. Um, got a few registrations coming in. Uh, I was here last night. Rose was here too. But uh, I was here last night. Nobody showed up. So it was kind of a bummer. But um, it's early. Um, it's, it's a, I was here last night from 6 to 8. Actually, 6 to 7.40. <laughs> because nobody showed up for registration. Oh. In case people can't make it between nine and five, I, I, I select dates and they're on the registration forms on what days I'm gonna be here after hours. Oh. So um, the first time I did it, I had one person show up, which was kind of cool. <coughs> so I stuck with my guns and I was here last night. My boy and I were hanging out in my office. Maybe next year you should say if you need to register after hours, you could set up an appointment. True. <laughs> How close are we to online registration? Hmm? How close are we to online registration? Yeah. Uh, if the township gives me about $10,000 so I can buy the program, then I'll be happy. So to answer your question, we're far off. Gotcha. I wish there was a way that we could do online registration, but cheapest program is 10 grand, roughly, give or take a thousand dollars. That's because of the, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's right. You're in your train of thought. Well, I was gonna, what, what's prohibiting just creating a registration form? Is it the actual transaction of the money? The actual transaction of the money and all of that. Trust me, I've thought about creating a job form Doing yeah, I'm just the whole process of doing job fail form, but how do they pay? And trust me, if I don't get them to pay when they register, 
they ain't gonna pay. I ran into a couple instances with basketball, but I let the kids actually play. There was a couple kids that didn't ended up not even paying ever. Or when I start approaching them about paying, then they stop coming. So, so I'd love to get an online system where people can register online, and then they're in the system, and they can just go in and register for whatever they wanted to register for. That would be great. But those, like Franklin, Franklin has what they call Rec Pro, which is a phenomenal system, and uh, yeah, but it, it's. Quite pricey. To Have you explored asking them if you can piggyback their system? No, but I don't know how. I mean, it's worth the ten thousand dollar chance of yeah. if they can just create a one-off. I don't know if you can do that with Rec Pro. I've gone through all of the the webinar and everything for them to explain the whole program, and it's pretty pretty nifty. I mean, the whole family can register and everything. Mm -hmm. It's just tough to when you quantify the numbers, right? You look at how many people play versus. Mm -hmm. Just by your cost. Okay. Yep. Moving on, the Great Lakes Bay Miracle League. The Miracle League is uh, for Jennifer. The Miracle League is baseball for kids with disabilities. That's the whole point of the Anderson Recreation Complex. Um, the Miracle League was built by. My predecessor, Mr. Rutherford, and uh, I put that on here just so that it's in people's minds, I guess. Um, I'm, I'm in the works and talking with the National Miracle League. Miracle League is a national organization. We pay $500 a year to use their name and their likeness and their logo and that type of thing. And I'm in talks with them about how to proceed because Eric used to be like the executive director of the Miracle League, and he's kind of gone off to the wayside a little bit. Um, he hasn't been around to help with it, and it's kind of fallen in my lap, and I need more direction as to the board. And there's supposed to be a board for it. Rob's actually on that board. Um, and they're supposed to be meeting, and that's where my help's supposed to come in, is through that board, according to the national folks. So I'm talking with Stephanie Davis from Atlanta, Georgia, on how to go about doing all this. And, and actually, Eric just emailed me the other day and wanted to know what was going on and da 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 So I emailed him back and said, gave him what he asked for. He asked for a registration form. I gave it to him, sent it back to him in an email and asked him if we could set up a meeting for the board. Um, so hopefully he can set up that meeting so I can actually meet the people that are on the board to see if they still want to be on the board. and get their insight as to where we go with this. The numbers for Miracle League, and if you look in the, in the sheet here, um, you can see in 2011, those 80 kids, 84 in 2012, 13, 84, and last year we're down to 65. So it's kind of dwindled without Eric being involved. And it's, it's a separate entity from the Parks and Rec Department but yet it's still the Parks and Rec Department because the facility falls within my jurisdiction. So mm -hmm. it's, it's something that I've been struggling with as to how to market it, how to get it out there. Um, last year I went up to Midland ISD in Bay County and tried to market it up there. And, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a huge marketing person. I have a few things, but I'm not the greatest person to try to get this out. And, so just trying to come up with different ways of doing that. So, But I just put it on there because the numbers are in this packet and, and I just want people to be aware of it. So if you know of a kid with disabilities that thinks that they can't play baseball, come on out and they can play baseball. I mean, it's, it's really something that's very unique. Um, I mean, I, I've enjoyed every second that I'm out there. When you got a kid that is being carried in by his father, mm -hmm. and he says, "We well, left his legs at grandma's." <laughs> Aiden, <laughs> um, he gets to know the kids a lot, and you know they left his legs at grandma's, so grandma had to bring his legs so he could go play <laughs> because he had a prosthetic leg. So it was it was kind of cool, you know. But 
And there's kids that play every year, and they'll be there every year. You can count on them 100%. Rain, snow, they'll be there. I mean, um, in the fog, it's really cold. And last year, I think they really appreciated the hoodies that I got instead of just getting them a T-shirt. We got hoodies instead, and that was kind of nice that we were able to do that. But um, it's really cool. And if you ever want to volunteer, opening day is April 26th. We're there every Saturday. <laughs> I'll take all the volunteers I can get. 26th, I think it is. 25th. That's a Sunday, the 25th. It's the last day in April. And I can give you a registration form so you can, uh, in the registration form, there's more about actually what the Miracle League is and how it all works. I'll give that to you for you tonight so that you're more aware. Oh, the Young Champions? Yeah. That, again, is a separate entity, and I really didn't have numbers to throw in there. Okay. So that was a separate entity. That's The Young Champions is a program based out of the west side of the state. And actually, I'm in an influx with that right now because the coach quit. And I don't know if Megan? they've... Well, she quit last week. Megan? Megan, yes. She quit last week. And I found out through the elementary principal, um, which I'm like, Really? That's we news to me. Tomorrow and we haven't found out. Yeah, so that's <laughs> so. But Young Champions hires the coach. They train the coach. Mm -hmm. It's a total separate entity. I just provide the facility and I try to help promote it mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they're a separate entity. Actually, I just we actually just got our first check from them too for forty four dollars and ten cents. So, yay! <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Uh, that was that was our portion for providing the facility for them to use. So, um, so I don't I don't really have the numbers for that. That's why it's not included in here, because she takes care of all that and it's all handled separately. All the money and transactions and everything, registration, all goes through Young Champions, and basically I'm supposed to get a check every month as a percentage of the registrations that came in for providing the facility. So while it's kind of underneath our umbrella, it kind of isn't because it's a separate thing. And like I say, I think they were going to hire somebody. Mrs. Duran, the elementary principal, her daughter has been in the Young Champions forever since she was like four, and now she's 20, I think, 19 or 20. And Mrs. Duran thought that she might take it over, so I'm hoping that she does because I know there was on average 22 people going every week mm -hmm. and to just up and quit yeah, it's and I haven't fun. talked to Megan since because when I do see her I'm going to say you couldn't even call me to tell me because she didn't even bother calling me and telling me or anything Apparently she hasn't told and the last, 22 people that think there's practice well, and last, right. well last Thursday there was no school so which meant there was no Young Champions program so this would be the first Thursday that there is without somebody, but it's that's all up to young champions. So, I see. was your daughter involved in that? Yeah, yeah. I was calling some of her classmates, parents, and stuff like to see the ride because it's just been like too annoying. So, yeah. Um, yeah and I don't know if yeah. that's why Megan quit. It's a great program. Birch Runs yeah. has flourished. Yeah. And and I don't understand why we can't yeah, get more participation. Really yeah. So, can we not? Yep. Yeah. F stands for fishing. Can we talk about fishing? Sure. Can we add that? Should have added it right before when he approved it. No, just about the <coughs> fishing, um, free fishing weekend. Just to note that it will be something that. Uh, 
Same as Bridgefest, second weekend in June. The Bridgefest softball tournament will be the weekend before that. He said the second weekend of June? This is actual Bridgefest, yes. And that's the weekend that he's talking about. And the sixth and the fresh And the sixth and seventh will be, is that Friday, Saturday? Yep. That Friday, Saturday oh, uh, will. Yeah, fifth and sixth. Fifth and, Saturday, fifth and yeah. sixth is going to be the softball tournament. Softball is Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. And basically, just so it's on, we talked about it earlier, but briefly, um, get, I get prizes together and promote it, and Bridgefest puts it on their flyer, and we do it on the bridge. And last year, I changed it up where um, registration is basically coming and picking up a, yard, a paper yardstick that says the year, um, Bridge Fest 2014. They take a picture, text it to me with their fish, and that's how they register, and that's how they enter. So there's no formal sign-up. Um, they basically go and fish anywhere on the Cass River, have this yardstick, and take a picture, text it, and then we have a, it could be like a Sunday, Evening, afternoon, and that's when we hand out the prizes. So last week, last year, uh, we did the whole weekend rather than doing a, a set time on the day. We mm -hmm. just did the whole weekend. You just have to have your picture and you can fish day, night, the whole weekend, have fun, and get people on the river. So you're looking for volunteers? No, more so recruiting prizes, and you know, you just getting getting the word out, getting the word out. Which we can do. So, yeah. So that's pretty much it. And it's still a bridge fest event, but we're getting involved with that, you know. So, so that's, that's it. Short and sweet. And then, once again, with the canoe launches being done, eventually it will be a canoe trip um, from Frankenmuth to Bridgeport or from point A in Bridgeport to point B in Bridgeport, whichever. Yeah. Yeah, we'd like to bring back the canoe race from the Hoffman site to Davis Park um, for Bridge Fest. Or, you can have multiple. Or yeah, those of us that, start there and end that on are 13 a or little or older may remember. Um, well, Roberto will remember the WSAM raft race down the Saginaw oh, yeah. River. I remember that. So um, that was, those are kind of cool. Yeah, my brothers have been on that. They were older. Where people make their they make their own homemade raft and bring it down the river. Float it down the Saginaw River. Down the Saginaw River. Two years ago, fourteen WSAM. 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 Fourteen WSAM.
so that's why their names are still listed because this is a 2014 report. Um, 2015 will include Jennifer, of course, and then our new accounting supervisor, Lisa Bone. For your reading pleasure. So I wanted to give you guys that. I just don't sit in my office all day. I don't. <laughs> Last Saturday you did. <laughs> Last Saturday I did. I didn't even put that on here. I didn't even put that on here. I'll include that as that. I, I forgot to put that on there. <laughs> We'll move on to letter B there. Um, I also gave you a uh, summary that I provided to Rose of the 2015 Michigan Recreation and Parks Association State Conference. Um, what an awesome time. I mean, it was, it was phenomenal. I was in Lansing from Tuesday to Friday. Um, I kind of gave you what, what happened every day, what I attended, the breakout sessions and stuff, and um, it was really, really a good time. I, I met a lot of a lot of other parks and rec professionals in the state, and uh, it was. Uh, Were you the only one from Michigan? Yes. Yep. And I did find out that if board members want to go next year, you can, as being a part of the parks and rec board. Um, we'd have to figure out somehow to pay for it because I don't have a budget right now, but we could figure something out. So um, next year is in. Huh? Yeah. You can go and I not go. Yeah, no, I'm going. Next year, uh, next year's conference is in Traverse City, so um, I'll be going to Traverse City next year. Um, but uh, it was really good. Um, I actually got a nickname while I was down there. Um, they started calling me the One Man Show because everybody else in the state seems like they've got recreation programmers, they've got site supervisors, they've got this, they've got that, and. They got a whole crew of field maintenance people, and they got this and that, and, and people asked me, well, don't you have that person? And I said, no, that's me. And so, and I went to the, I know I went to the one guy, and I said, what, you don't go out and drag diamonds and chalk them? I said, I do that. And he's like, no, you're the one-man show. <laughs> so they call, they're calling me the one-man show. Um, we are, even Thomas Township has got people that, He's that actually they have all year round. So um, this is a very unique situation here in Bridgeport with just one person. Frank Luth has a recreation programmer and Janelle Wright. Darren Kaczynski is their parks and rec director. Thomas Township's got John Culliver, I think is how you pronounce his last name. He's the parks and rec director. And he's got he's actually got a secretary slash um, programmer is what he called her. Um, that helps out with things. Um, so yeah, I, I found out that we're pretty unique. In what do they talk about me. from a numbers perspective? Like, I mean, when I just looking at like the number of kids. When I told them what my population was, they couldn't believe that I was the only person. I told them that they said, "Well, how big is Bridgeport?" Because I thought we were some small little so population of about ten thousand. They said, "Really?" And you're the only person. They they were shocked. But you're dealing with communities like Canton, Novi, mm -hmm. Northville. I mean, these are some of the people that I met. Um, and then actually I found out there's only two parks and rec departments in the state of Michigan that are actually accredited, and that's Canton and Dearborn are fully accredited by the National Parks and Recreation, whatever. I have all the information on national accreditation. It'll be a long time before we get there. Um, I did go on Tuesday. I went and was in a class called Certified Youth Sports Administrator. Um, I was in training from nine to five. That's that was the on-site portion. I have an online portion that I that I'm doing. Um, there's nine sections, and I have to pass each of the nine sections uh, within 60 days, and then I will become a Certified Sports Administrator, Certified Youth Sports Administrator. Um, which will be good for our community. Um, in there, we talked about recommendations for parks and recreation departments. We talked about child abuse and neglect and how to screen people that are coaches, um, a multitude of things. Um, 
the one thing that really sticks out to me is they talked about policies and procedures for a Parks and Recreation Department. And I kind of put my head down a little bit and she asked the question, who, who, has, who doesn't have policies and procedures in our Parks and Recreation Department? And I rose my hand, I was the only one. And I said, I don't have any, and I don't know if I do have any. You're um, the well, <laughs> we don't have any policies and procedures as far as registration goes and everything. Um, and on there, they give you some suggestions. So what I did is I went on, looked at the four that they offer and I'm gonna model ours, and then this will be something that I work on over the next couple months, is developing policies and procedures for such things as registration. How do we pick teams? How do we do this? How do we do that? So that it's something that's to go by. Um, and they recommended doing that. They talked about building a shield um, in this class, and the shield is your shield against being sued, basically. Um, and if you have things, if you have policies and procedures in place, then and you follow those, which you should if you have them in place, then there's no gray area for anybody to say this or say that. And it doesn't open you up to litigation. So. I would agree. I would say that it's strong to say we don't have any formal yeah. policies and procedures in place. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely you know, unwritten rules or, well, this is how it's always been done. Yeah, from, but that, from picking yeah. teams to that doesn't assessing fly. talent. Right, that doesn't fly right, very absolutely. Well. So what I did is I went through the four suggested ones that they had, and actually the one that I picked that I'm gonna model mine after, because like she said at that, in that training is, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You find somebody that you like and you model yours after it. So I'm gonna model ours after the Andrews Air Force Base Youth Sports Handbook. So ours will be, being modeled after this. I like the way they have their set up and some of the stuff that they actually already have in here is what I need. So, um, so yeah, I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel. And over the next couple of months, I'll be doing this, so. So, but yeah, the conference was great. Um, I learned uh, there was actually a, a legislative lunch where I had lunch with Vanessa Guerra and we talked about the DNR Trust Fund and uh, that was really cool. And the trust fund is a, a pot of money that's with the state, it's protected by the Constitution. It's $500 million. And the interest off of that is what they give out for their trust fund grants. And it's important to remind the legislatures that that money is there for Parks and Rec because it's very easy for them to say, well, we gotta fix roads, there's $500 million there, so let's use it. And they pass a bill, da 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 da, -da and then our money's gone. Um, so we wanted to remind them why that money's there and why that money is important. So that was the whole point of the legislative lunch. There was a keynote speaker that day, uh, Dr. John Crompton from Texas A&M. I wish everybody could hear this guy because he's phenomenal. Irish accent, just he was he was very good. So um, that was that was cool. That was the uh, highlight on Wednesday, and then. Uh, Went to a session where they talked about making meetings effective, and, and I noticed it's funny because now every meeting that I go to, I kind of revert back to this and how they use Robert Rules of Order and, and uh, just the way things are done. And the one thing that sticks out is when you make a, when somebody makes a motion, they always say, I make a motion to you. That's incorrect according to law. That's incorrect. They should be saying, I move to or I move that instead of saying, I make a motion. And then, this, then the person should say, I support. That is seconding it. They should say, I support. So like today in the DDA meeting, and they're saying, I make the motion, da, 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 da. And I just like sit back there and I'm saying, that's incorrect. Because you should be saying, I move or to, or I move that. Because what you're doing is you're moving stuff forward in a meeting as opposed to a motion. What's a motion? And you're moving the topic forward and you should always, approve something to open it up for discussion. You don't just make a motion and then vote on it right away. You're opening it up for discussion and then you can call the vote on it. And we went through a whole process in this uh, presentation that they had. It was really good. It was from the MSU Extension Office and uh, I actually have some stuff that I'm gonna be sharing with the folks here at the township on how to 
how to run meetings more effectively. So, but that was the one thing that stood out in my mind the most was how everybody says I make a motion to instead of saying I move to or I move that. So, I don't know. So. We're very so, informal. So we're, we're, we're very informal. informal. We're very informal. <laughs> she has that extreme. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was interesting to say the least. It was interesting. Um, but anyways, so there's some more, some more reading material for at your leisure there on my summary of the conference. If you have any questions about any of that, um, please ask because it's fresh in my mind still, um, even though it was a couple weeks ago that I went. So awesome time though, definitely. And I kind of talked about CYSA certification. I already talked about that a little bit. I'm also taking a grant writing class right now. It's called A to, a to Z Grant Writing. Um, it's an online class through Central Michigan University. Um, and I'm doing that right now as well. Um, it's going pretty good. We're about 10 lessons deep. We've got, oh, no, eight lessons deep because there's two more weeks left. And there's 12 lessons. You get two lessons each week online. And uh, just learning about how to write grants and how to search for different grants and that type of thing. Um, and I'm eight lessons through, and I've passed each lesson with 100%. So. SBC, when United Way is going through right now. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a grant writing class that I'm doing um, through CMU. Also, I'm checking in on, just another little tidbit, checking in on getting my master's through CMU for Parks and Recreation Administration. So helps when my sister works there. And then finally, seasonal employees. Um, as soon as the township works out their agreement with our union um, that governs our people, um, we will uh, we'll be posting for two part-time seasonal employees. I have one person that is coming back, Bob Brown, who worked for me last year. He's gonna be coming back as a part-time seasonal worker. I'll be hiring two more to go along with Bob. So are we allowed to work on the show? Hmm? Sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> For the season, that's about it. Um, and my seasonal employees basically cut grass. That's basically what they do. Um, last year we were able to accomplish some of those, some other things. Um, and some of that's in the year end report. Um, uh, I would say, yeah, you can apply for it fit it into your schedule. It's all daytime hours, so. No weekends. No weekend. well, um, like last year I had one guy work the hardball classic for me. Um, basically going around emptying trash, and chalking diamonds when they needed to be, so. Um, so yeah, that's it, unless there's questions for me. I talk too much but when you're a one-man show, that's... Who needs more people to talk? <laughs> <laughs> Public comment? <laughs> so we all look the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you have to ask her three times. <laughs> yeah. uh, you gotta go through it three times. Just... Two more. Public comment? Public comment? Uh, public comment. Yeah, we'll wait. Oh, okay. Public comment? Board member comments. Um, I, so. I think Bill's doing a wonderful job. He's got a lot to report on, and he's definitely doing more work than one man show should be doing. So keep up the good work. So that's my supervisor, please. <laughs> it, it'll be on the broadcast. <laughs>
Yeah. So, oh. do <laughs> Were concessions for were concessions for those events? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll get a hold of you. I just agree. You're doing a good job. You've done a lot of you've done a lot of work. I'd echo that. I mean, you know, we we speak with truth and candor about you know the one man show piece and. That sort of thing, and and if my record served me right, you had two part timers last year, so upgrading to three, I think it's big. I would challenge you to maybe look at: Do you need three during the summer? Can you move one of those to a different season? I don't know what the restrictions are and limitations. And and, and just to something. answer your question, um, there is restrictions. Yeah. That's one thing that I'm trying to get the township to work with the union on. Is right now. Seasonal employees can only work May to October. Um, I want them to start the second week of April because that's what I need to get out on the diamonds and get them to where they're playable come May. Uh, they start May 1st and I'm already behind the eight ball. Um, so I'm trying to work with, I know I've spoken to Rose and she's going to be getting with the union about bringing in people sooner and then I want to sporadically place my three people to where I'm going to have coverage from the second week of April all the way through October because last year um, grass was still growing in October and nobody was cutting it. So it got long in a lot of spots. But um, my hope, my hope, getting back to your other portion, is that um, next year when I do my budget for 2016, I'm going to put in the budget for a part-time person as a recreation programmer um, that can help me with basketball and stuff so I'm not here all day and then going to the gym at night to watch over the gym area and stuff. So that's, that's my plan and my hope. Um, I actually put out on Saginaw Valley's website to get an intern to try to help me with the Great Lakes Bay Miracle Week. I have one person that's replied, and I'm trying to get back in touch with her to see if she's interested. So that's it. My, that's my other avenues to do interns. So, so the union allows interns, but they don't allow um, seasonal in, employees. Interns can't do union work. Though. They have an intern mowing the lawn. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can't even mow the lawn. Right. I can go out and drag fields, and I can chalk them. Well, the but good I can't news is, is that once you get the uh, the completion of the canoe launch and you put that black top down, that's that much less space you got to mow. That's so, right. You know, yeah. That's right. right. Great progress. Great job. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I saw yeah, this story. See you quite a bit in the fields, and you're always running around doing something, either you know, making sure the coaches are happy or, or concessions are going or the games and you know that's just, try that's not just on the surface this year. so everything else that you're doing and you know, I've told you many times you need help I know you do but it seems like you have it under control <laughs> as much as you can you know yeah. I mean it's not out of control by any means and for you to balance everything at one time that I'm dealing with in football and basketball and t-ball and, and they're enjoying it you know and it, it is sad that there's not more involvement and I don't know what you can do to to almost perk them to to track them to participate because it's it's, it's kind of sad especially in, for basketball you know, granted, some of the kids that we're going to be in my group and went up to the next yes. level. So, yeah. you know. And that was because we were lacking in third and fourth grade to right. create teams. So, I mean, we had kindergartners playing against third graders. <laughs> that's fair. And I know I'm going to turn on that, but that's, I was down witnessing my niece who's in the uh, uh, fifth grade, the fifth, sixth, and seventh graders play together in a school of the size of Lake Orange, which baffled me to see three grades together like that at that big of a program. Ridiculous. Right. I don't think it's like just for, for I think it's, it's, it's 
it's how do you get them off a couch? Mm -hmm. I actually met the Parks and Recreation Director from Lake Orion down at the conference. Big guy. He said, you guys figure out how to refurbish buildings at a low cost, let me know. <laughs> He's got a lot of aging infrastructure. But yeah, no, good job, and I'll be working with you in the future on mm -hmm. everything, so. Appreciate it. Um, other than that, anybody else have anything to say? I move to close. I, <laughs> I support. <laughs> <laughs>